So my long-term subscribers will know that my expertise lies within metalworking. But since I've diversified my skills within woodwork and laser cutting, my new dread hate is sanding. Fortunately for me, a company called Tallent has asked if I would like to try their new sanding disc. So I've got a standard type from my local hardware store and their type, which has this unique kind of ribbing on their surface. Tallent claims that these will last twice as long as these. So I've got a project that I'm hoping to make some money out of and we'll see if these these actually make it more efficient. Let's have a go. So I've been gathering pallets and getting all this free pallet wood. I've been ripping them down to size to about 450 millimeters or 18 inches. And I'm hoping to sell some custom signs. And the key selling point that these are upcycled materials. So you can see once I've ripped it down to size, it's all really rough. So this needs to be sanded back. So I've got my orbital sander that I got off Amazon, link in the description if you're interested. I actually really recommend this one. What I've got is 120 grit sandpaper. <laughs> right, so top job so far, no complaints. So the key feature with the toolant pads are these net kind of impressions. These rhombus shapes are meant to be anti-clogging. It's meant to dissipate the heat better and remove more material more effectively. So essentially a pack of 50 of these, which is about 12 quid, is the same as 100 of these at 18 pounds. So I'm going to do the same job with one of these and I'll show you how it feels. To align one of these up, by the way, I simply just fold it in half ever so slightly. I first align one of the holes in the bend, then the opposite one, and then they all line up perfectly. So for this I was putting in the same effort, but um, I feel like this one took a bit longer, but I will check the uh, footage to see. Now from just that one bit of wood, we've got a little bit of clogging happening up here. This is another one that I used on about five other pieces of wood. Now Tallent claims that theirs won't clog up in the same way. So we'll sand all this wood here and we'll see how it turns out. So for those who've been waiting a long time for this, I've got a follow up to the DIY respirator. I'll turn it on. Now the idea of this is, one, I hate wearing a mask, so I like something that I can quickly whip up, like so, da da da, and then fold it back down when I don't want to use it. Summer months, you're probably thinking, well, this will get quite hot, it's actually air conditioning. More on this, coming soon. So I sanded both sides of these nine boards, I rejected a couple over there because the imperfections were too bad. And there you go, the experienced woodworkers amongst you will say that that's pretty good going. But once I've finished processing these, I think I'll set up a jig and we'll do a fair test with this. So I'm thinking I'll make a little arm with a set weight on top and we'll test its sanding capabilities over the length of 20 minutes or something. We'll compare how much of the wood is sanded away and how integral the sanding pads there are after. So let me show you the next step in the process and how profitable these should be. Right, so the next phase is to cut these planks to the right dimensions. Using the CO2 laser, I managed to cut out these acrylic templates. So I'm gonna screw these to the board and then I've got these flush trim router bits to uh, tidy up the edges. So I've mounted it to my steel table and I also 3D printed a TPU extraction adapter using that Anycubic Cobra Neo that we uh, reviewed recently. So my shop vac just simply plugs into the side here. Because it's TPU, it can flex. It's all good and strong. So I'll screw the template onto the wood here and I'll install my router. There we go. So every single one should now turn out exactly the same. Right, so I've cut 11 now. I wasted a couple, so I chopped a few more up. So the next part of the process is just to put a bevel on the edges. For that, I'm using this tool, which believe it or not, is a chamfering tool for steel. But it was advised to me on the previous episode, if we drop down to just 50 PSI, it will reduce the noise incredibly, and you still get a really good finish. So there we go, a perfect bevel. I like how quick and lightweight this thing is. And as always, links are in the description if you're interested in one. All right, so I'll show you how I'm gonna set these up in the GWIC, the 50 watt CO2 laser. But I thought I'd also experiment with blacking one of the pieces. So that was just simply done by giving it a bit of a torch over and then just rubbing it down, taking off any of the loose debris. I mean, incidentally, on its own, that is a beautiful finish. 
This laser basically can travel at 36,000 millimeters per minute. And when we engrave that fast, it actually doesn't burn the surface at all. You're left with just clean wood. So I'm interested to see if we can get a negative out of this. So I've got an inscription here all ready to go here on Lightburn. Notice how the black box, I've zeroed it to the corner. This is now my template for all the other quotations that I'll put. So all I have to do now is just change the quotation or change the font and we're ready to go. All of this is done on Lightburn, no other program. So to help me with setting up, I also made this little template here. This seats up on the honeycomb tray and gives me the exact zero to nest all the parts in. So I just bump it up against that and now the laser will definitely be centered on this piece of wood. All right, turn it on. All right then, aha. Well, that's come out just lovely, I think. That's a nice deep engraving. So I'll give that just the once over with the sander and that'll make that pop a lot more. And also a coat of oil, I think. All right, so it's not too bad. You can see it's very grainy. If this was on the flat side of the grain rather than the other side, those would probably come out a lot, lot clearer. It's a really deep engraving though, I still like that. Well, it's an option and it doesn't take very long to do either. It's literally just burn it across, it's probably a minute, two minutes, and then a rub down and then same process as all the others. Right, I've put a bit of oil on these now. And for that I've got linseed oil. So I started working out the prices of these. Now they work out to be about 10 minutes each to make. That includes ripping them down out of pallet wood, giving them the sand, giving them the bevel, and getting them laser cut. So it's a very tight 10 minutes, but theoretically I can get it all done. Especially if I batch produce everything, get everything done all at once. So if my workshop rate is say £36 an hour, that works to be about £6 each. That includes a wage if I'm employing someone or if I'm doing it, as well as general workshop expenses. Then there's packaging, I reckon that's about a pound. So a bit of cardboard, a label, a bit of tape. Next I want to add about a 30% profit margin. So as I said before, profits are what you use to reinvest in. So for example, the laser cutter that I've got that was about three grand let's say 30% that's two pounds that means I need to sell 1,500 of these before I've paid for my laser cutter and you've got to consider by that time I've got to buy a new laser cutter so your depreciation of your equipment should be technically included in your workshop rate. Then there's like a 15% marketing fee. So if I'm selling on Etsy, for example, it's roughly 15%. So that's another quid on top. So six pound labor, one pound packaging, two pound profit, one pound online marketing. 10 pounds and then on top of that we've got postage so for me to send to america it's roughly 15 pounds or if i sell locally to the uk it's only three pounds so i think i would turn it to 10 pounds plus postage and then i've got to consider if i run a sale well let's uh, do a 30 percent sale that's all of my profit so something to think about when they're buying from those little etsy shops but this is more like a side hustle. So it's not your main income, it's just another string to the bow. I may well only sell one of these every month or something, you know, that's not a lot to live off. But what it does do is it makes use of equipment that's not being used. So sweating the assets as they say. Now I have got to consider as well that these are gonna be custom made. So there's gonna be some sort of customer interaction which will take time. So the way I'm gonna manage that is basically limit the options. I'm gonna to stick to certain fonts, certain sizes and make the sale as simple as possible for the customer that they can just type in what they want within the boundaries that I've set. And that means there's less thinking involved really. So back to the main point of this video, I can't recommend if these are any good or not until we've done something scientific. So we've just revolved these around a business plan. So how much is this gonna save us in both time and money? So to test the hypothesis, I give you my little test rig. So the mechanics are very simple. It's on a weighted arm like this. You've got 17 millimeter MDF, which is consistent throughout the length. So whichever test we do, we're guaranteed it's gonna be the same. So to set the pace, we're first gonna use the off the shelf pad. Let's stick that on there. There we go, that's on there now. So I've set the timer to 20 minutes. Let's turn it on. Just past 10 minutes. 
So let's have a close inspection. Well, that's actually not bad at all. I thought it would be a lot more gummed up than that after 20 minutes. Right, so it has been sanding on a slight angle, I've noticed. Let's just test the depth of that. 2.83 millimeters. So I knew it would have a hard time with MDF, but I was surprised how little it actually sanded. Now this was my first test, and as you can see, the jig wasn't quite strong enough and it was moving to the side. So you can see those divots there, that was because I had too much weight on top, so it wasn't actually oscillating, it was just kind of vibrating in position. So since then, I've actually stiffened this up a lot more and I was hoping this would be a more fairer test. So keeping it all at the same angle, I'm gonna move this board around and now we'll test the Toolance version. Put the pad on here. Right, so we'll start another 20 minutes. Just past 10 minutes. Look at that. So both pads look in really good nick still, but that has sanded a lot, lot more than the other one. Just check the depth of that. <laughs> 5.46. So not only have we nearly gone twice as deep, but we've actually covered nearly twice the area as well. So I could do a much fairer test to get this to flatter. That way we can get an accurate reading of whether it's actually performing twice as better or not. So the cheapest ones that I found on Amazon go for about 10 pence per pad. That's if you buy a pack of say 240. Toolance pads come in a pack of 50 for about 11.99. So that works out to 24 pence per pad. So they're pretty much twice the price, but you'll definitely get twice the performance. However, one of the things I like about these is they are zirconium, which is a super hard diamond-like alloy and is very good on steel also. Toolance also own this brand. So I think you can call them Org Tough or something. These are 40 grit flat discs and I use these all the time with metalworking. So a pack of 10 of these is $13.99 according to Amazon. And according to Amazon, the competition are £18.97 for 10. Again, these are zirconium and pretty good value. All right, so I'm gonna take some fancy photos of these now and put them on my Etsy shop. Now you guys must let me know if you enjoyed this content or not. I know I've done a lot of review videos recently, but if you're interested in seeing what I'm actually making, then do check out my Instagram page. But in the meantime, we've got the off-grid DIY steam engine to build. We've got a hydraulic press to build. We've got more pattern sculptures for you guys to make and a ton of other stuff that I promised to do that I haven't done yet. So if you're interested in the previous projects, do check out this video here. And if not, may I encourage you guys to get out there in the real world and forge for yourselves a life worth living. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.